In this tutorial, we will solve a problem involving pumping water from one tank to another. So let's look at the uh, problem statement. Water is being pumped at uh, 20 Celsius from tank A through a one and a half inch nominal diameter sanitary pipe to tank B, which is located at an elevated level. The mass flow rate of water is uh, 0.8 kilograms per second. The length of the pipe connecting the tanks is uh, 40 meters. The pipe fittings include one fully open globe valve, one half open gate valve, two threaded 90 degree regular elbows, and the water level in tank A is at an elevation of 2 meters, and the water level in tank B is at an elevation of 10 meters from the floor level. We are to calculate the power requirements of the pump. So here are all the given items. We are going to use a table to determine the viscosity and density of water at 20 Celsius. So from the table we find that the viscosity of water is 993.414 10 raised to power minus 6 pascal second. The density is uh, 998.2 kilograms per cubic meters. Now the diameter of the pipe is uh, one and a half inch and we find from this table that uh, this is equivalent to 0 0.03561 meters. The mass flow rate m dot is 0 0.8 kilograms per second. The total length of the pipe L is 40 meters. Now the elevations of the water in these two tanks Z1 is 2 meters and Z2 is 10 meters. So let's look at the system diagram. As you can see the uh, tank A uh, is at a lower level than tank B. There is a pipe that connects tank A first to a globe valve and then to the pump and then there is an elbow, uh, another elbow, a gate valve which is half open and then the pipe connects to tank B. Uh, location 1 is the elevation of water in tank A which is 2 meters and location 2 is uh, on the top uh, of the water level in tank B uh, which is at an elevation of 10 meters. So our approach will be to first determine the mean velocity of water in the pipe. Uh, then we will calculate Reynolds number and uh, from Reynolds number and using a appropriate diagram we will find out the friction factor and then we will be using the uh, energy equations that we have developed before in previous uh, tutorials to determine the uh, power requirement for the pump. The first step in our solution is to determine mean velocity. Now we know that mean velocity is uh, the mass flow rate divided by the density and the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So the mass flow rate is 0.8 kilograms per second the density is 998.2 kilograms per cubic meters and the uh, we know the diameter so we can find out the cross-sectional area which will be pi d square over 4 so we have pi into 0 0.03561 square meter square divided by 4 and uh, we c cancel some of the units and uh, we get 0 0.805 meter per second and that's the mean velocity in the pipe uh, connecting the two tanks. Now we can calculate a Reynolds number in our next step. You recall that Reynolds number is rho u d over mu and uh, rho is uh, 998.2 as we found from the tables times the velocity is uh, 0 0.805 meter per second and the diameter is of course 0 0.03561 meters. 
Now this is divided by the viscosity which was uh, as we found from the table for water uh, is 993.414 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. Now recall that in the givens and also from the table the units for viscosity were Pascal second but you can also find out from one of the other tutorials on viscosity that Pascal second units are equivalent to kilograms per meter second. So we can replace uh, Pascal second with uh, kilograms per meter second. Uh, that will allow us to cancel some of the units. In fact, all the units will cancel out because Reynolds number is a dimensionless number. So we have uh, Reynolds number equals 28,800. And that also tells us that it is a turbulent flow because any time the Reynolds number is uh, greater than 4,000, we have turbulent flow. Now, note that from our system diagram for locations 1 and 2, the both the tanks are open to atmosphere, so pressure at location 1 equals pressure at location 2. Also, the velocity at location 1 and location 2 is uh, going to be almost zero because we are assuming that the tanks are fairly large in diameter and uh, the level of water in the tank will not increase or decrease in any rapid manner. So since that level will move only slowly uh, we can assume that the velocities at location 1 and 2 equals zero. So again you will need to refer to the uh, previous tutorial on uh, on pumping and uh, you will find that number of terms will cancel out because uh, pressure 1 equals pressure 2 and the velocities are uh, 0. So EP will equal G which is the acceleration due to gravity into the uh, change in elevation 10 meter minus 2 meters plus the energy involved with friction due to major losses and energy for friction due to minor losses. So our uh, next steps will be to determine the uh, frictional energy major losses and minor losses. So let's first find the EF value for major losses. Now we need uh, friction factor. So for this we will use a Moody diagram as shown here and since our Reynolds number is 28,800 we can find out for a smooth pipe that the friction factor will be 0 0.0058 then the uh, EF value for major losses will equal 2 multiplied by 0 0.0058 which is a friction factor times the velocity square so it'll be 0 0.805 square meter square divided by second square for units times the length which is 40 meters divided by 0 0.03561 meters which is the diameter for the pipe now note that this uh, formula uh, we have discussed previously in one of the other tutorials on uh, friction. So you should refer to that tutorial if you need uh, more information about this uh, expression. Again, uh, meters will cancel out and uh, the calculation will give us 8.443 meter square divided by second square. In the next step, we will find out the minor losses. And uh, since there are a number of items there, the first one is the entrance of water from the tank to the pipe so this is a, a sudden contraction and uh, since the area of the pipe is much smaller than the area of the tank so A2 over A1 is almost zero so the uh, CFC which is the contraction uh, coefficient that will equal 0 0.4 times 1.25. Again, you need to refer to a previous tutorial 
uh, if you are looking for the uh, equation. And uh, that, of course, calculation gives us 0 0.5. Again, we can find out the energy term related to the entrance. So it will be CFC u squared over 2. That will equal 0 0.5, which is the value for CFC, times 0 0.805 squared. Uh, that's the velocity. And divided by 2. And that gives us 0 0.162 meters square per second square. Next, we will look at all the fittings. So we have two elbows, one globe valve, and one half open gate valve. So now we refer to a table that gives us the various uh, values for CFF for the fittings. And we note that uh, for a 90 degree elbow, uh, which is threaded, the value 1.5. Uh, for the uh, globe valve, the value is 10, and for one half open gate valve, the value is 2.1. So we add all those items. We have 2 times 1.5 because we have two elbows, plus 10, plus 2.1, and that gives us 15.1. Now we can calculate CFF times u squared over 2. And that equals then 15.1, which is the value for CFF for fittings, times 0 0.805 square, the velocity square, divided by 2. And that gives us uh, 4.893 meters square per second square. Now for the fluid exiting the pipe into tank B, we have the area, of, again, of the pipe is uh, really small compared to the area of the tank. So A1 over A2 equals 0. And uh, CFE will equal 1.0. And uh, CFE times U squared over 2 then equals 1 into 0 0.805 squared divided by 2. And that gives us 0 0.324 meter square per second square. Again, you will need to refer to the previous tutorials if you are uh, looking for more information on how uh, we are calculating CFE, CFF, and uh, CFC. So in the next step, we will add all the uh, frictional losses. And uh, we had uh, earlier determined uh, the values as 0 0.162 plus 0 0.324 plus 8.443 plus 4.893 and that adds up to 13.822 meters square per second square. Uh, you can certainly rewind to the previous uh, pages uh, to find out all these uh, different uh, friction losses that we determine. So the next step is to find the EP value from our uh, equation that we had uh, looked at right at the beginning of when we started solving this problem. So EP equals the uh, acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meter per second square times the change in elevation, 10 minus 2 meters, plus all the frictional losses, the energy associated with that, and that is 13.822 meters square per second square. And that gives us 92.3 meters square per second square. Note that the units meter square per second square can also be converted to joules per kilogram. Again, you will need to look at one of the previous tutorials on this. So we can write our value for EP equals 92.302 joules per kilogram. So then the power requirement is uh, the energy term 92.302 joules per kilogram times the flow rate that we were given in this problem, which is 0 0.8 kilograms per second. Note that kilograms will cancel out, so we get 73.85 joules per second, or 73.85 watts. Now that's the requirement for pumping water through the various fittings from tank A to tank B. Now many times uh, the efficiency in the system will not be 100%, but it will be uh, less than 100%. So that means that uh, 
the actual power requirement uh, will be uh, somewhat higher uh, than this value that we have calculated. Uh, so quite often to do that you will need to divide this uh, term 73.85 with the efficiency of the pump. Uh, for example if the efficiency is uh, 80% then you will divide 73.85 by 0 0.8 which is a fraction for that efficiency term and uh, then the power requirement will be certainly higher because of the inefficiency involved. one point five 